we're back again. Nice. Cup refilled. Let's do this. Okay. So, in looking at the console output, uh, one thing um, that we can pretty much rely on is that um, it will always have an end bracket and a colon. So, uh, we will use that to um, split out the information that we need. The only thing that we in reality need is the info. Since it always outputs uh, whichever thread slash the log level followed by a close bracket and a colon, we can easily just uh, look for the close bracket colon and then backtrack to um, the slash uh, to get the log level. Thank you very much, Chief. So um, that's what we will start looking for. Okay, so just to make sure, we'll see if line actually contains the close bracket and the colon. Um, index off will always return a positive value, uh, indicating the character position within the string. So it, if it uh, exists, it'll output uh, a positive value. If it doesn't exist in the string, it will always return negative one. All right, then um, let's grab the uh, first part of the string, um, which is, um, I don't know, it's timestamp, thread, and log level. Um, we'll call this um, temp. No, actually, let's just do log level equals um, line dot substring. We'll start at the beginning and grab up till the index of where the close bracket and the colon is. Now, since we don't exactly need the close bracket, um, we will just use the character position, which in effect indicates one less character than uh, where the bracket actually starts. So this should be good enough. Then um, from here, we'll cut away everything from um, the last uh, slash. So we'll search from the end of the string back to this slash. Lock level, substring, uh, find the um, whoops, last index of an occurrence of a slash. And we want to start at the position just past the slash. And then from the length of it, subtract that, which will leave us with info. Pretty neat. And from here, we can then, um, actually we can uh, do the uh, log message, just for the sake of checking for the done for help type help, as well as stopping the server and stopping server. So we'll do something similar, grab from uh, where the first occurrence of the close bracket and the colon is, and since they are two characters long, we'll do uh, plus two, and to the end of uh, the line, uh, line dot length minus this position, and then we'll trim whatever spaces might be there. Uh, the reason for grabbing this part is uh, strictly so we can check for these three occurrences, the done uh, stopping the server as well as stopping server. Um, depending on the version of Minecraft, uh, sometimes both of them s show up, sometimes only one of them. Uh, so just to make sure, we will look for um, both of these instances. Um, as well as the done. Um, these we need to um, trigger uh, those extra events.
Okay, so let's first see if log message, um, whoops, if log message contains, um, well, actually, we should be able to see if log message has a space in it. Then we'll see what uh, what's actually in there. All right. If the first word of the log message, uh, log message index of space. Um, let's see. That would be here. Equals to equals done. And log message index of um, is greater than negative one. Um, we can do a lower and then look for this setup, for example. Or we could actually just do it as is. Whoops. Yeah, let's grab this. If this is the case, then we need to um, raise the on server started event. There we go. Now, if this is not the case, um, then we need to look for um, the other two instances stopping the server and stopping server. So if log message is either equal to um, stopping the server or it equals the other message, it doesn't matter which, then server shutting down. Now, <coughs> in its current setup, um, that effectively means that because this particular version of uh, the Minecraft server actually outputs both of them, uh, that uh, effectively means that we will probably get this event twice, because um, they exist on separate lines. So to prevent that, um, we will add in a simple little flag um, as a boolean um, server shutdown signaled equals false and then go down here and go if not then raise the event and whoops set it to true now we've effectively ev prevented this event from tw triggering twice and we can still catch the message itself. Uh, yes, it will. Uh, for the reason that um, we are looking for the first instance of um, close bracket and colon, uh, not the second. If somebody types something in chat, it will still say uh, server thread slash something, uh, close bracket colon, and then the player name followed by whatever is typed in the chat message. Um, so it shouldn't uh, interfere with it in any way. But we can definitely give it a try and see what happens. It's a good point. Um, anyway. This should ensure that we can now do the server started as well as the server shutting down events. And the last thing we need to do is raise the console changed event. Um, and that's something we need to do here. Remove this. Except in this situation I would like the entire uh, log message instead of just the text itself because the timestamp and such could be important. So let's just pass uh, the actual line that we got from Java. And that should be it.
fairly straightforward, nothing too complex. Alright. Um, let's give this a spin, shall we? Um, we will leave this in here for now and then just prefix this with old and then collapse it and then do a new one. Server handling. There we go, private. Um, we need an instance of the server host, so let's do that. Server host. Um, we'll just call it server for now. Equals new server host. There we go. Ha! Huh. That's interesting. Of course, we can't do that because uh, we need to assign it an ID. So, for now, let's just leave this as null. There we go. Um, Sky, are you on our modded one? It doesn't matter if you're on the uh, modded one of ours. Uh, I'm running this on a local uh, vanilla, um, so no problem. All right. Now, um, it would be beneficial if we can get uh, some kind of either randomized ID or a sequential. Uh, it doesn't really matter for this, since we're only running one instance to begin with. We will simply just assign it um, uh, a number of one. Um, uh, you can you can stay on the uh, modded one, Sky. No problem. Um, anyhow, let's uh, get some stuff done here. So, um, ba -dum -bum 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 -bum. save. Oh, this would be the start one. There we go. All right. Now, since we've um, set this up, um, actually, we'll call this Minecraft server. This could also uh, be done in a collection, of course, um, but regardless, we still need to hook uh, all the different events. So let's do a initialize Minecraft server, and then do the Minecraft server dot and see what kind of events we've got. Now, we have the console changed, so let's grab that one. We also have the server shutting down, so let's grab that one. Whoops. There we go. We have the server started and the uh, server starting and server stopped. There we go. All right. So um, just to put the, these in order, uh, we'll have the starting um, started. Uh, we probably should put the console in there. Uh, we have the shutting down and stopping, and we'll put these in the same order. There we go. And then get them or get ordered. Uh, Service starting needs to be at the top. There, we need the console changed. Um, there, we need the service started. And the shutting down. And finally the stopped. There we go. All right. So um, because we are raising these events across two threads, um, we need to implement a little bit of uh, thread trickery um, to ensure that we can um, properly transfer the data between threads. So first of all, let's check if invoke is required. 
if it is, um, we need to invoke. So we'll throw a new action in here. And since we're transferring an integer, we need to specify that, then the method, followed by the data. There we go. And then bug out of here. That means past this line, it's thread safe and copied over to the main thread. There we go. This effectively means that uh, right here we can now properly um, access the server host ID variable data uh, as if it was part of the main thread. So uh, it's just a quick way of transferring um, the data to the main thread. All right, um, it's starting up, so uh, for now we'll just leave it as is. Uh, we'll have to do the same thing here, so if invoke required, we'll invoke this as a new action with the int uh, for the server host ID, a string for the log level, and a string for the log message. Again, referencing the method itself, as and finally followed by uh, the variables log level and log message. Again, we need to bug out. This one needs to be capital. There we go. Here it's let's say. All right. So here, um, just to show. Uh, that we've actually captured things the way they're supposed to. Um, we will throw all of these in the um, diagnostics, debug, write line, and then do um, our own take on these. Do a double just to um, have it look different. Server host ID to string. Um, finished off by this, and then uh, Minecraft server is starting up. There we go. And we'll do something similar down here. In this case, we also have the log level, so we will add that here. Plus log level, plus remove this and add the actual log message. There we go. Now remember this will all go into the output uh, pane uh, of uh, Visual Studio so we can keep track of it. Um, this is of course just debug information for us while we're doing this so at some point this will all have to be removed. Uh, it's not something that should ever make it to uh, a release package. Just noting it. OK, again, invoke required, um, invoke new action, whoops, there we go. We again need the uh, server host ID transferred, there we go, bug out, uh, yep, and we'll grab a copy of this one, change the message. There we go. And this would then be the Minecraft server started. There we go. And again, on the shutting down, invoke required. Um, invoke new. action. Uh, there we go, the method for it, we're calling ourselves, so there we go. Grabbing this, and then Minecraft server is shutting down. There we go. If Invoke required. Invoke new action. Again, we need the um, ID 
there we go, transfer it, return, and throw a message. There we go, Minecraft server stopped. Now, the interesting thing that we can do here is that we can actually go in and manipulate our start and stop buttons. Um, at least then we can use these for now as indicators whether um, it's actually starting up the way it's supposed to and doing all the things it's supposed to do. So um, let's go in the server starting here. After posting the debug message, we will disable the start button. There we go. Um, let's see, after server started, um, right here, we will then enable the stop button. It doesn't do anything just yet, but um, we'll do it this way, just so we can see uh, that it's actually doing stuff. <coughs> All right. In the server shutting down, we will disable the stop button again. And in the server stopped, uh, we will re-enable the start button. There we go. And um, in the form load event, uh, down here somewhere, Right there, we can, ah, we'll do it in the form show. btn uh, start enabled, btn stop enabled false. Forces the start button to be enabled and um, disables the stop button. We should probably do some more checks and stuff uh, to get things working the right way, but um, for now, let's just see what this does and see if it actually works. So, let's give it a shot. Alright, I will move this over here, just so um, we can watch it do its thing. And when the Minecraft UI pops up, uh, I'll move that out of the way. Let's see what happens. Absolutely the wrong thing. And the reason for, for that is because we haven't changed it to uh, the new server host um, thing just yet. So let's shut this down and tell me that I'm a derp. <laughs> Internal joke. All right. Um, during the load event, um, we need to instantiate the server host thing. So let's do that. Minecraft server equals new server host and let's put a random number in there uh, like this for example that's fine it's now instantiated and we need to change this to become this instead there we go now we've uh, switched it over but this won't actually work because we haven't configured it <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so let's start by configuring it with the path that we have here, um, the jar that we have here, as well as the memory size that we have here. There we go. Quick and easy configuration. Let's see what happens. Start this up, and not much is going on. Well, something worked, just not all of it. Hmm. Let's see. Interesting. The thread, uh, blah 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 blah, has exited with the code zero, indicating everything was fine. All right. So we know that um, the thread part of it actually works. Uh, we just don't know why the events are not triggering. Or do we? Does anybody have an idea?
Well, the one thing that we didn't do is we didn't call this method, which um, initializes um, all the event hooking uh, for our Minecraft server, uh, server host thing. So it might be a good idea to um, initialize this. And since we can't really do this until we have instantiated the um, object, that is something we need to do here. There we go. Now we should see all of the different events fire up exactly like we did them. So let's give it another run. There we go. And see what happens. <gasps> the button's changed. And it says Minecraft server is starting up. It correctly detected that it has started. And interestingly enough, we can now use our main UI. There we go. So let's do a shutdown and see what happens uh, with the stop button and what happens in the uh, output down here. So let's get focus on the right window. Do a stop on this one. Boom. Minecraft server is shutting down. It also correctly signaled Minecraft server stopped. So we've actually managed to get this to um, correctly find uh, the messages. As you can see in the output down here, uh, it's also correctly outputting the ID as well as the actual log level. And we're getting the entire log message. So. From here on, we can build internal um, uh, console logging. We could even add a uh, user control to display the logs and all the other cool stuff that um, we might want in an application like this. But um, at least for now, we have something that works. Thank you very much, Mr. Pinwheel. I'm sorry, it's Sir Pinwheel. <laughs> Anyway, as you can see, um, the cool thing about having this as a separate setup is that we could actually add this to um, a collection and run multiple instances. Uh, each would then run individually, but since each of them is capable of uh, identifying itself by means of the server host ID, we can also correctly um, loop through the collection and figure out exactly which one of these um, individual server host objects is actually posting the message or uh, raising events and whatnot. So um, this then leaves us the option to, for example, monitor uh, what's going on with a particular thread. Um, and if that particular instance of a Minecraft server shuts down, we could force it to start up again. <laughs> uh, could be. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> all right. Um, just to prevent ourselves from being confused by all the old code, um, let's get rid of it. There we go. All right. <coughs> now, um, as it stands right now, we actually have a fairly simplistic but functional uh, server launcher. Um, it's not particularly high tech or um, particularly uh, easy to use or um, actually control stuff because at the moment we can't exactly send a message to the server to have it stop. Now, um, if we want to communicate uh, with the server, um, we have the option of uh, using Archon. And um, that effectively means we need a, a TCP connection uh, to the server. Um, where we 
have to identify ourselves um, according to the password in the server properties file. Uh, so next up, I guess, will be a little bit of um, let's see what we need to do. So first of all, let's go grab the... we don't need this anymore, we don't need this anymore, and we don't need this anymore. Um, but we do actually need to take a look at server properties. Now, um, the server properties file um, pretty much resembles what uh, a standard ini file is, except there's no group. So at the moment that means we can't exactly use our um, ini file class um, to load up uh, the contents of the server properties, but it would be pretty nice if we could actually have it um, uh, load up the server properties file so we can access um, the individual uh, keys and go through and see if archon.port is uh, defined, um, whether a password has been set, um, maybe even assign a password before we start up the server, uh, and also um, to enable and disable Archon uh, as needed. So um, we will do a, a quick um, update of the ini file class um, so it can also accommodate the server properties. Now as I mentioned uh, when I built this, um, back in the day ini files supported two types of comments. Um, one of them being a semicolon and the other one being a uh, hashtag. And as you can see the server properties uh, file uh, is always prefixed with um, a comment stating that this is the properties file for a Minecraft server as well as the date of the last time this particular file was written. Now every time you fire up um, a Minecraft server uh, Minecraft will uh, read the contents of this, uh, configure itself, and then write it back to disk. Uh, so it gets updated every time the server chain uh, is started up. Um, that's just the default behavior of it. Um, in any case, um, one thing that we should probably do uh, while tweaking the uh, ini file class is to um, take care of these two comment lines. So we will add a um, another property to our ini uh, file class up here somewhere. Path, file name, file path name, blah 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 blah. Um, we will do a property here called Uh, Minecraft server properties get um, set and do that false to begin with. Uh, determines whether the uh, ini file is a Minecraft server dot properties file. There we go, and then we will put in. Um, specific behavior uh, that deals with uh, storing whatever comments uh, are found um, as well as uh, ignore the fact that this is not strictly speaking a valid ini file um, because there's no group in it. So let's see if we can implement some behavior to um, accommodate for this particular setup. Uh, first of all, let's go down to the parse ini. Now, um, if the group index equals negative one, and we are trying to um, add in um, a key value pair, then uh, currently it will ignore it uh, because it doesn't have a group to put it into. But um, 
if the index um, equals negative one and the Minecraft server properties flag is set, then we will create a virtual um, uh, group that we can stuff uh, all the keys into. And this is how we will accomplish this. Uh, if this is greater than one or actually we'll do it here. If group index equals negative one and the Minecraft server properties is true, then we will add a virtual group to it. So grab this, grab this, and then force this to become um, dollar dollar Minecraft. Dollar dollar. There we go. Okay. This now allows us to um, generate a new um, non-existent group. Um, we've decided that this will be the name of it. It doesn't really matter what it is. We could put um, milkshake in there if we wanted to. It doesn't matter. Uh, we just need to um, look for it later on. There is another thing that we need to uh, take into account and that would be the initial uh, comet stuff. So let's go up here and check um, whether uh, the Minecraft server properties is true and the first character of the line um, equals a hashtag and then else if. Uh, of course this needs to be the apostrophe instead of the quotation marks. There we go. Here we need to store the already written comments. Okay, so we need to add a comment buffer. Let's go do that quick. So up here we'll just add in a quick string array um, comments and set it to zero. There we go. All right back down. Now if we are loading up a comment then let's resize the comments, add one entry to it, and then store the actual comment as is. There we go. All right. Now we can um, store the comments. Uh, we have it generating a, a virtual group to store stuff in and correctly updating the group index, meaning we can actually store um, the key value pairs that are in the server properties. And the next thing we need to do is update the um, save, meaning the actual build any thing, because we need this to not uh, write the virtual group that we created and we need it to stuff in the comments to begin with. So first of all, let's see if this server properties is true and comments.length is greater than zero, then we'll add those. So one line at a time, whoops, C less than comments.length. Oh, I'm really derpy at the keyboard today. <laughs> All right, result uh, plus the comments plus the, there we go. This now takes care of that. And uh, down here, um, we need to do a check to see if uh, this is true. And to see if uh, the name equals our predefined Minecraft virtual name. If it does, then skip 
and in all other cases add the group. There we go. Of course we can invert this but in case we at some point want to put something in here we could actually um, grab this and move that down here instead. There we go, because we know that uh, this is the first piece of information being written there, so might as well do that. There we go. This will then um, skip writing uh, the group name and instead dumping in the comments that we had in there um, and effectively ignore uh, any kind of group setup. So this should take care of it. And with this we can actually now um, load up the uh, where is it um, server properties file and we should also be able to write it again. All right, um, let's give it a try just to see what happens. So we'll get another button. Um, we'll call this um, I don't know server name. Uh, actually server info. And go info. Grab the event. And put it up alongside the other control events. Blah blah. And then let's see. <coughs> now we already have a check here so let's Grab that quick so we don't have to type it again. This just ensures that we actually have a configuration for it. Um, here we'll do an any um, file um, server prop new. There we go. And then we will specify the Minecraft path plus Minecraft jar. No, we actually don't need this, but we do need server.properties. There we go. And we actually need to do something first because we need to set. There we go. Then we can post a message. Let's see, server name. Um, actually, that's server notd plus server prop dot get value. Um, we'll go and do a fix for this as well. Um, in a minute, and then get the um, ba -da -ba 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 -ba, MOTD right there. <laughs> hey, Blue! And we'll go fix this in the key stuff here. Um, so, get group index. Now, if uh, nothing was found, the group name equals nothing and the Minecraft server properties is true, then uh, we will return an index of zero. There we go. All right, um, this also needs a new line. We can grab the um, Archon password just for the fun of it, and the port. Um, whoops, plus server properties, get value, blah blah, uh, archon.port, a new line, and we'll do an archon password. Server, get value, blah blah, uh, archon password. Boom. And then message box dot show message. Boom. Let's see what happens. Oh, 
holy smoly, it actually does say server MOTD Sheridan's Vanilla 1.12.2. It figures the port uh, as uh, 26 uh, 665 uh, and the password as S45 blah blah blah, which is randomly generated. And um, if we do a quick comparison, yeah, that l pretty much looks correct. So, we should be good to go. We now have options to uh, effectively reuse um, the ini file class that we generated earlier um, to both read, modify and save uh, properties within uh, the server properties file. Now what we can do with this is that we can um, generate a random uh, Archon password every time we start up the server. Um, which makes it more difficult for a hacker to um, force his way to the console of the server um, because it's ever-changing. Um, we can even do um, uh, different port numbers every time we start it up uh, should we want to because at the end of the day um, the only uh, um, uh, our uh, server launcher will still know the port number uh, to connect to, um, but it uh, further reduces the risk of uh, somebody finding it, especially if um, the Archon port number is um, outside firewall range, for example. Um, which, of course, leads to further protection of the server itself. Um, uh, that we can um, add in some extra functionality to protect the server. This would be one of them. All right. Um, <clears throat> now, um, for us to uh, be able to com properly communicate with the server and send it commands, uh, such as um, forcing a save, um, uh, let's say we uh, want it to do scheduled restarts, um, throw some messages in chat uh, that uh, tell the players that, hey, we're about to save, or hey, we're about to shut down for maintenance, whatever. Um, it would be pretty cool if we could implement um, um, a way to um, to do that. And of course, Archon is available to do that. However, I'm pretty sure that I won't be able to do a thorough um, um, go through of the Archon protocol um, in an hour. Uh, sadly, I have to uh, close down in about an hour. Uh, so instead, I think I will postpone implementing Archon um, until uh, Friday and then do a thorough thorough uh, walkthrough of uh, how to build up a um, standalone class for Archon communication with a Minecraft server. Uh, of course this particular uh, build will also um, allow you to communicate with any uh, Valve source based uh, servers uh, because the protocol is basically identical. So um, it's a multi-purpose class. Um, it's not uh, limited to Minecraft alone. But that's something that we will look into on Friday, um, same time as today. Uh, you can see the scheduled um, stream times in one of the panels below. Um, and I think for today I will um, call it a project and um, leave the board open uh, the chat open for questions or requests, um, whatever is on your heart, spill it out there. In the meantime, I will see if I can get away with posting this on GitHub. Um, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, that would be
be nice. <laughs> Take care, Sir Pinwheel. Thank you for joining in. Just gonna check this quick to make sure that it actually did post it. Um, There we go. Now stuff's happening. All right, let's see. There we go. Nice. And uh, copy this one, and the entire project can be found here. I will update that on uh, my source code panel uh, after the stream. Feel free to grab whatever you want from the project. I uh, impose no copyright on any of the code written. Um, and the same goes for the uh, future uh, Archon class that I'm going to build. Um, so, feel free. Does anybody have any uh, questions or suggestions or um, requests for uh, how to do stuff in C Sharp or um, anything, feel free to um, throw a comment in chat or a, a request or a question and I'll see if I can answer it. I'm also open to uh, future um, development projects that uh, can be done if somebody has a uh, wish or a request. Okay, if nobody has any um, questions or suggestions or anything, then uh, I think I will 
thank everyone for joining and um, we will continue um, further development of this particular project uh, come Friday. Thank you very much for joining.